Welcome to Connected Chronicles, the quarterly news flash about recognition, rewards, talent, and leadership. Again, we have a fully packed news flash with three updates. First, Michiel is going to tell you a bit more about strategic personnel planning and how the pilot went at the research support teams. Michiel, go for it. As academic services research, we participated in the pilot for the strategic personal planning. We wanted to participate in this pilot because there are a lot of transformations going on with regard to science, say open science, for instance. And as academic services, we support researchers in their daily business and also want, of course, to make sure that we deliver the services in the right place in the right time and also with regard to the new transformations. This is also the reason that we wanted to participate to see how we can get the organization ready for the next years, say 2027 as a landmark. I want to share three results with you. The first one is that we realized that our labor force is, uh, in, have, we have the labor force in place and also that we can, together with them, make the transition toward the future with our, with our organization. The second one is that we have identified four critical qualities that our colleagues and employees need to make this transition. One of them is personal leadership. And that links to the third result that I want to share. And that is that we want to implement learning communities for our colleagues to find each other, share uh, knowledge and expertise together over the boundaries of the schools in which they work and make sure that the right information is with the right colleague on the right place. Next up, we have Monique. And Monique was at a very special occasion last summer and she's going to tell you a bit more about it. Monique, go for it. This summer, I participated in the Catholic World Youth Days in Lisbon. One and a half million young people gathered there and I could be there. And of course, why am I there? Well, that's exactly my passion, to dive into the world of young people. I do that because I'm an educator of young people and I was there to really walk with the young people towards the gatherings that were there and really hear them talk about what they value in life, what they think is important. And it's grounding me as an educator and as a researcher, because that's really what I want dive, to dive into. What is your rules in life? What do you value? What keeps you going? And I gathered that there automatically. And it's not the peer reviewed article I write about it that's really helping. The entrance and the choice to follow this route was exactly my own passion and, and get inspired there. So I made a weird decision to conduct research there, but it helps me as well in my passion for my research as in my education. Last up, we have Martina, who's going to provide you with an update about the differentiated career paths within Tyson and how that process went. Martina, tell us a bit more about that process. So at the end of last year, the Faculty Council of Tyson approved the new HR policy for our school. Uh, the HR policy that is uh, based on the vision of recognition and rewards. Uh, and we are very happy with that outcome because it took us two years to reach that point. Um, two years because we not only wanted to have a sound HR policy, a good document, but we also wanted to make sure that uh, a broad majority of our faculty support and embrace the new policy. And we are quite convinced that this is the case at this moment. Uh, the new policy provides more diversified career paths for our uh, faculty. Uh, what it does not do as yet is define what is the specific performance requirements per domain in different career paths. And that translation into specific assessment and uh, promotion criteria is something that we will be working on in the coming months. Instead of having departments work on that translation independently, we choose for a more coordinated approach, uh, meaning that per domain we will bring departments together in so-called calibration sessions to discuss, to align, and what we hope is that the, at the end we will have assessment protocols per domain that are more similar than different uh, across the departments. Of course, once the criteria are defined, we are still not done. Uh, the management team will continue to monitor the implementation of the new uh, policy and to make sure that the ultimate goal of recognition and rewards is met. What is this goal in our view? It is to make our school more future-proof. It is to make it better able to respond to the changing needs of the environment, of the society, while preserving the international standing and the reputation of our school. That was it for this time. If you have any questions about the topic we just discussed, feel free to reach out.
Otherwise, see you in the next video.